Hello, and welcome to a new episode of This Is My Offer, where we highlight unique partner offerings powered by AWS. My name is Gavin Phillips. I'm the worldwide partner leader at AWS for the life sciences industry. Today, it's my pleasure to speak with Gopi Vikrant. Gopi is a partner at ZS Associates and is here to talk, Mac, talk about Max.ai. It's a low-code, no-code Gen AI agent platform developed by ZS. Gopi, welcome, and thank you for your partnership with AWS. Can you tell us a little bit more about ZS Associates and what you do? Uh, thank you, Gavin. Thank you for having me over. Uh, ZS is a global powerhouse in uh, the healthcare industry. We work with almost all of the uh, pharmaceutical and uh, healthcare uh, players in the system. And uh, we work across R&D, commercial supply chain and manufacturing. So we cover the entire um, healthcare uh, value chain. And um, we have more than 13,000 employees. Uh, the firm has been working in life sciences industry for over 40 years now with 35 offices worldwide. And um, I'm a partner at the firm, uh, based out of our Seattle office, and I lead our AI products and platforms uh, uh, unit that delivers accelerated value to our clients. Excellent, so, so Gopi, you know, We've been hearing from enterprises across the life sciences industry. You know, they're rapidly adopting generative AI. And really over the past several months, you know, we've seen many of our customers deploying Gen AI technology, ranging from more of the experimentation to kicking the tires phase to production level solutions. Love to kind of hear your perspective. Could you tell us a little bit about some of the some of the use cases that you and the ZS team are seeing gain traction in the life sciences industry? Gavin, yeah, you're absolutely right. We have seen a rapid adoption of generative AI, uh, much more than any other technology uh, shift that we have seen in the last 15 or 20 years, whether it's big data or even uh, some of the cloud transformations that we have seen. I think this is primarily because uh, Gen AI is running on top of all the investments that um, the clients have made, whether it's in data science or in the cloud or in bringing all of these data assets together into a single place. Now, generative AI is, is a software layer, which is kind of unlocking, it's able to unlock productivity fairly fast and also deliver some top line, bottom line benefits by, with a much higher velocity than some of the um, earlier technological shifts that we have seen. And this, I think, is uh, especially interesting in the pharma industry because it's one of the most highly regulated industries. This is where you need both innovation and precision and how you apply an innovative technology and deliver that value. And you need to be able to bring in the right mix of um, technology domain and processes to deliver that impact where it matters, right? For example, um, you can think of like five quick use cases which have a lot of adoption in the, in the life sciences industry. Um, there is a tremendous amount of time that goes in to create content that um, is accurate, that describes the products um, and, and drugs accurately, and then engages with the different stakeholders in the healthcare ecosystem. Um, today, Generative AI can help us speed up that process and also both reduce uh, the time it takes and the cost um, it, it, it takes to get some of these um, uh, content made. Uh, similarly, if you look at um, clinical side of the industry, protocol development and uh, and authoring of some of these information, medical information, um, needs to combine both structured and unstructured data and bring together in a in a very compliant format. And again, that's where generative AI uh, helps quite a bit. Um, marketing is a straightforward use case where you have a large number of um, marketing um, stakeholders who you want to engage as a firm. Um, and also, given pharmaceutical companies have one one of the larger sales forces, how do you use generative AI to help the sales reps to engage the stakeholders with the relevant information, whether it's about um, a, a success, uh, clinical success trial or some information that has come in about uh, new information that's available about uh, a patient success story or just more better information about the drugs and how they're doing. So these are a couple of um, quick use cases. As you can see, these range from content to marketing to clinical to supply chain and, um, and uh, some of the great information that is there. So hence, it's, it has been a very powerful force and, and there's a lot of adoption in the market. Well, that, that's really exciting. I mean, those sound like some amazing use cases and, and clearly they're, you know, they apply across the entire life sciences value chain. Can you tell me a little bit about how you and the ZS team are 
are really bringing those use cases to life for your clients using Max that AI in AWS. Yeah. Um, we have been a long standing partner of uh, AWS, where uh, we have, uh, I think, over the last decade, we have brought in a lot of innovative solutions into the market, especially in the life sciences industry. Now, Max.ai is a low code, no code platform for specially designed from a generative AI standpoint of view. This is a very complementary platform to uh, uh, Amazon Bedrock. So we run on top of Bedrock where we leverage all the latest and greatest uh, foundational elements that AWS is bringing together and take that and, and have, have this lens from a domain standpoint of view, from a life sciences standpoint of view and get this use cases live very, very fast, right? So, um, so Max.ai essentially helps us create um, autonomous agents at scale. And when I say an agent, think of it as something that has a generative AI core, which is powered by LLM, but then we are able to connect to a traditional machine learning model or some of the um, uh, models that we have developed in the past and also connect it with um, automation techniques so that you're able to execute some form of a digital task in the enterprise and unlock that actioning layer uh, for many of these use cases um, in the enterprise. So, Gopi, thanks for an overview of some of those use cases for the Max.ai platform. Uh, would you mind walking us through a, a few you know, demos of the different use cases that you just touched on? Yeah, Gavin. Uh, so let me pull this up. Um, and uh, this is basically Max.ai, the platform. And uh, uh, as you can see, there are many of these autonomous agents that we have uh, now brought to uh, production into the market. And these are all um, live in many of our customers. Um, I'll first start off with a simpler use case where um, many organizations want to unlock some productivity benefits. Um, so this is um, an agent called Nova. Um, it can, in a, in, inside a client environment, in a very um, compliant manner where the technology teams can figure out what exactly they want to enable through different teams, um, uh, Nova helps to configure and uh, deploy um, LLM agents really, really fast. And these unlock some basic productivity benefits, whether it's um, doing uh, question and answer engines or having uh, simple data analysis and uh, doing certain things. As you can see, people have created a number of agents uh, here. Uh, for example, if you look at um, um, a quick Q&A engine, so this has uh, some of the information about a particular medical trial and information that is there. Now, if you want to look at this um, content and in a private mode, so you have asked this question around, um, how do I summarize the results of this particular trial? And then uh, now it's looking at that private repository of information and then um, providing uh, that insights. Now, these are there are quite a few um, um, uh, agents uh, that can be uh, that can be created. For example, you have uh, a, a range uh, starting from question and answer engines to um, an agent that can help you write better, um, in, in, uh, especially when you give it some certain training material and also looking at uh, analyzing sentiment of surveys and other things that are available. So this is a very handy productivity agent which can quickly unlock some benefits um, for the enterprise. Yeah, I mean, no. it looks like based on what you showed, there, there's quite a few pre-built, you know, productivity agents that you guys have together, which I'm, I'm sure are very useful for, for your, for your clients. It, it seems like they have many different applications uh, across the business. Um, you, th thanks for sharing some of those, you know, e examples. Uh, would you maybe jump into to one of the other use cases? I think you were going to talk about the autonomous digital marketer. Yeah, yeah. So um, while the productivity agents kind of uh, unlock some of the basic benefits, an interesting use case that has come up um, in the life sciences industry is that you have a fairly large sales force uh, and these representatives uh, go and talk to physicians and different stakeholders in the healthcare value chain. But there is always um, uh, a number of stakeholders which are not directly reached by the sales reps. In those cases, what um, uh, what generative AI is not able is able to do is um, we connect to to the CRM system, and then um, we are able to uh, take look at the data that's available about individual stakeholders, whether they are uh, 
nurse practitioners or some of the uh, administrative functions in various uh, um, uh, clinics and also some of the other stakeholders which the sales reps are not able to reach or just augment that activity. Um, now, Generative AI is able to look at um, uh, look at these uh, um, uh, stakeholders, understand who they are, and also based on the information that is available with the with the firm, you are able to understand their uh, uh, the details, get some additional insights about them, and even look at some of their behavior and activity. Based on that, um, uh, uh, the system, the agent is able to then create a fairly personalized reach out. Like, what's the kind of introduction that I want to provide? Um, maybe I wait for a few days and then provide a success story. And this is all integrated um, into their systems and then executed via uh, the existing marketing technology and CRM systems. Again, all of this runs on top of AWS within their uh, data enclave. So it's a highly secure uh, mechanism for um, the customers to interact. They can even control uh, the various uh, content or type of activities that they can do. For example, you might want to limit it to patient stories, product and newsletter, and then certain type of messages um, that provides an instruction to the agent to function certain way. So this is a more advanced use case where it's actually taking an action and driving certain business impact um, on how a stakeholder is behaving. Okay, well, that, that's super interesting. I mean, especially so for the autonomous digital marketer that you just walked through, you know, it's really intriguing use case, particularly in the era of, you know, personalized medicine. And there's obviously a huge application for that use case from a scalability perspective to, as you mentioned, engage more customers. And, and ultimately, that's going to, you know, help help your clients and customers uh, get new therapies to patients faster, which, which is super exciting. Um, was there any other use cases you wanted to touch on today? Yeah, yeah. And this is uh, this kind of autonomous marketer is... Uh, uh, very useful, like for mid-sized companies too, because they may not have the same resources as larger companies. That's also where generative AI can uh, act as an equalizer in certain aspects, right? Now, That's a great point. Um, yeah, and another interesting, very interesting use case is uh, about uh, content, because every organization is content is is creating a a wide variety of content for for their uh, stakeholders, and especially in the pharmaceutical industry, you want it to be highly compliant because it's a regulated industry. So this is where precision becomes really important. And uh, what uh, what we were able to do is uh, combining the uh, power that Generative AI brings and our 40 years of domain exp expertise in the, in the pharma industry and our understanding of how these processes function really in the enterprise, we're able to take a lot of the assets or content assets that are there. First, how um, get some intelligence out of the out of the existing content so you understand what are the kind of the um, uh, 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 guidelines that the brand has to work with and um, and, and bring that intelligence out um, using generative AI. For example, it has a lot of text and uh, graphical components. And we've built in um, additional process to uh, create newer content based on either the objective that is there um, uh, that, that the company has to do or um, certain other variations that they would want to look into and add in the aspect that this content is regulated and uh, um, and at the end of the day, uh, it has to pass through the master of the regulation. So you add in those like whether certain copyrights or the trademarks or the certain other um, in information is there and use, um, uh, use uh, the power of uh, generative AI to check all that automatically and then figure out whether a certain type of content that is now augmenting marketing departments and is getting created has a higher chance of passing through the regulatory muster or not. If not, where do they, where do you really have to um, kind of um, uh, come up with the needed insights? All right. So, for example, now it has checked and said that, hey, uh, here are all the places it's similar. Here are all the places where you need to probably change. And based on um, similar things that it has seen in the past, uh, this, there's a high chance that uh, this will pass through the master um, once those changes are made. Well, that's very interesting. I mean, I think particularly in the content creation space, I mean, you, you think of that as really the bread and butter when it comes to generative AI, whether you're creating images or video, text, you know, what have you. And uh, as you mentioned, in the healthcare and life sciences space, particularly being highly regulated, 
Uh, then comes the medical and legal review you know, portion of it. And, and so I would imagine this is really streamlining the content, not only creation, but review process uh, for your customers. And um, just wanted to thank you again for walking through a handful of those Max.ai use cases today. And it sounds like you know, there are even more that, that you could walk through. And, and if I was a client you know, watching this, this video today and interested in, in Max.ai for my organization, you know, what would be the best way to engage with you and the, the ZS team? Yeah, and um, Gavin, basically, uh, Max.ai is available directly on the AWS Marketplace. Uh, that's how we distribute the platform into 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 the client environment. Typically, the process is very very smooth. You can you can directly add it to your stack. It takes um, roughly around four to five weeks for us to get these use cases live in a client environment, and they're and, and they're uh, designed to be low cost rapid deployments that can unlock the business value fast, right? So that's where the focus has been. Um, if, if somebody, if, if one of the clients wants to learn more about it, we have also presented this in AWS reInvent in December, um, 2023, two or three months back. And then um, uh, we'll add in the link uh, below here. So please reach out uh, to us for a demo and uh, would love to show uh, many of the other use cases that, uh, that are really helping a lot of customers in the life sciences industry. Excellent. Well, well, Gopi, thank you for your time today. Uh, thank you for your partnership. And, and thank you to our viewers for tuning in to another episode of This Is My Offer. Thank you, Kevin.